All right, everyone. Today, we're going to be fixing a bug where when you walk up against a certain ledge that's uh, at a particular angle, the uh, character can kind of freak out and uh, act a little bit weird. So let me just show you what that looks like. Um, so first of all, I'm just going to turn off the water bodies because I want to be able to get down to the bottom there. And um, basically, when we walk at it at a particular angle, you can see that the character kind of freaks out because it's trying to figure out which collision to pay attention to. All right, and here's how we solve this problem. Um, so as you can see, I've got this little sphere here. And um, we can toggle it on by clicking Show Ground Sphere. But you can see that I also have a new Boolean up here that's uh, on. And this is called G-Check. And it's basically what's happening is we have a check sphere here. And when it's intersecting with the ground, it's telling us that we're intersecting with the ground. And when we're not intersecting with the ground, it allows us to um, collide with angles like this. So what that means is while we're sort of running up against this, it's going to give us some smooth motion because we're not going to be fighting between the two collision points that are happening. So it's ignoring all of the collision points that are outside of that, that uh, limit. And it's based on the angle of uh, the two spheres, where, where the two spheres um, sort of touch the surface, which is the slope limit. And so that'll all be explained. All right, so there's one thing that I wanted to address before we get started, um, and that is that uh, if you didn't watch the previous video to this one, the, the one where I'm uh, sculpting, I mentioned in that video that this is going to be the last episode, or at least one of the last episodes of the WoW clone series. And the reason why is because I'm actually kind of getting bored with the series and there's some other stuff that I want to try out. This does not mean that I'm never going to come back to it, and I may well, but I just want you guys to know that this could be the last episode, or, or at least one, the, the, these next two could be the last two episodes. And uh, I just, I didn't want to continue doing a series that I wasn't really into, um, and because of this I've basically decided that all the code that I've, I've done in this, these last few videos are completely open source, um, so you can find uh, the GitHub and the Mega uh, down in the description. And you're welcome to do what you want with them. I'm actually really looking forward to seeing what people come up with. Uh, there's already been some really amazing examples that I've seen on my Discord, uh, which you can join if if you want in the link down in the description. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, the next video in the series will be a sort of post-mortem or a reflection. I'm not really sure what to call it yet, but it's basically just going to be me looking at the series and thinking about what I've done, thinking about what I like, what I think I could have done better, and all that fun stuff. Uh, anyways, so let's uh, let's just uh, dive right in. So first, this fix heavily relies on the character controller fix. So um, let's just open up our player controls and we'll create the method that we need, and then I'll start talking about what we're going to be doing. So let me just change the size, make sure everybody's really happy. All right, so let's come down to below locomotion, or above locomotion here, and let's create a new method. We'll call it void uh, ground check. And then above that, let's create a void controller update. All right, so let's just take both of these. I'm just gonna do this and we'll adjust it later. I'm gonna put this right underneath get inputs. All right, and uh, yeah, so let's start with controller update. So essentially the problem is, let me just show you by pressing play. There's two problems. Number one, if we change the height, you can see that our origin where our player is, is adjusting, you know, based on that. But if we also change the, the radius, it does the exact same thing. And what I want is I want the bottom of that, the transform basically, the, the origin of the transform to be at the bottom of the controller at all times. Let's uh, let's do that, and we're gonna say if controller dot height divided by two is less than controller dot radius, then we're gonna do stuff. Else, we're gonna do other stuff. All right, so let's start with this one. We'll go controller dot center is equal to vector three dot up times, and then I'm just gonna copy and paste this here. 
um, into brackets actually. And then the else is going to be controller dot center is equal to vector three dot up times controller dot radius. And that's pretty much going to be that. So as you can see, um, if we adjust our height, oops, what happened here? Okay, it's doing it backwards, so we need to do greater than. All right, so let's press play. And so now if we adjust our height, you can see that it just moves up. And if we adjust our radius, you can see that it only moves up. All right, so now let's address a problem. And uh, let me just show you what that problem is. So let's run over here to some flat ground. And let's just hide the icon here. You can see that our player is floating. And this is honestly something that I should have addressed in like the first episode, but you can see it right there. So problem there is that the controller is being offset by the skin width and the skin width is 0 0.08, which means that the height of our character controller needs to be 1.92 and that the position of our capsule should be 0.92. And so that way, when we press play, you can see that we've already set it up to adjust the height, uh, the sort of center of our controller, and it actually looks like the character is touching the ground now. So this is just something that you have to consider when you're using this uh, type of uh, character controller. All right, so now that that's done, let's actually begin by creating our ground check sphere. So I'm gonna scroll all the way up to our ground section where we set up our variables. And right before ground ray, that's where I'm going to put all my uh, ground sphere variables. So I'm going to start with a bool, and I'm going to call it G check. And then I'm going to create a float here and create one called G radius and G skin. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a vector three, and I'm going to call this one G pause. So let's start with setting the G skin. We're going to set that equal to controller dot skin width. Then I'm going to set g radius equal to controller dot radius divided by two and then i'm going to create g pause is equal to transform dot position plus vector three dot up times g radius and actually i should put this in brackets g radius minus g skin all right so now that we have all three of those let's create our ground check so let's go g check is equal to physics dot check sphere and then we're going to go g pause g radius and the last one will be the layer mask ground mask all right let's um let's uh do one last thing let's make sure we serialize uh g check so we can see it serialize field and then let's have a look and as you can see nothing's happening with g check but if we come over here to the flat ground you can see that it's intersecting and it's actually not going to be particularly consistent so yeah, you can see it just flickered on and off right there. So we need to make some adjustments, but also we need to be able to visualize this. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna come down all the way to the bottom, right underneath on controller collider hit. Let's create a new void on draw gizmos. And in here, I'm actually gonna create a new variable up at the top here, just one moment. Um, and I'm gonna create it right next to show ground ray and we call, call it show ground sphere i'm going to copy that bring it all the way down and then go if show ground sphere then we're going to go gizmos dot color is equal to color dot red you can pick any color you want or you don't have to set a color and gizmos dot draw wire sphere and i'm going to set g pause as the center and g radius as the ra oh that's gravity g radius as the radius so now you can see that we have the ground show ground sphere here and we can toggle it on and off so it's kind of it's kind of small and it's ineffective and um the way we need to solve this is twofold. So first of all, I'm gonna come over to controller.skinwidth and I'm gonna add a multiplier. So I'm gonna multiply this by 1.2F and then we also need to update the G radius or change the G radius. I want this to be based on the angle of the ground that's intersecting or that's uh, colliding with the, um, the controller. 
And so the way we do that is uh, with this cool uh, formula that my dad worked up for me. Um, and basically it's G radius is equal to the controller radius minus, and then in brackets, uh, cosine of the slope limit over one minus cosine of the slope limit. And then that's multiplied by skin, uh, the skin width. And so let's start by doing math F dot cosine inside here. We'll go controller dot slope limit, multiply this by math F dot deg to rad, because we need to convert this in from degrees to radians and then we'll go g radius is equal to g radius over and then inside brackets one minus g radius and then we need to multiply that so g radius times equals the skin width so that's going to be g skin and then we're going to do one more and that's g radius is equal to controller dot radius minus g radius so let's have a look at that and so now you can see here it's it's uh intersecting with the ground but if we just i need to show the sphere you can see there it is and if we change the radius you can see it updates so that it's not so it's pretty much consistent and this angle here of uh, where these two are going to touch is basically the angle of our slope limit and that, that's consistent all the way down um, but if you invert this, so if you take the radius smaller than the skin width, that's where it's not going to work. So, um, just make sure that whatever you do, your radius is always larger than the skin width. All right. So now that we have all this, let's come down here back to the bottom and let's make some adjustments in here. So first, let me do an if else that we need. So let's go inside this if statement, if G check is true then what we want to do is we want to get the distance. So let's go uh, float uh, g distance is equal to vector three dot distance. And then the first one is going to be g pause. And then the second one is going to be hit dot point. Next, we're going to go if g distance is less than or equal to g radius then what we want to do is we want to include this. Then we'll go else, we'll just copy this into there. So basically what we're saying is, if the, the sphere is intersecting, measure the distance to make sure that the collision point is within the distance of the sphere. If, if it is within the, the radius of the sphere, then we're gonna set it. Otherwise, if the ground check is not happening, means we're not touching the ground, Therefore, you can just do this. So that's basically it. And if we look at the effect that this has, let's just uh, see. So here, yeah, it's, it looks like it wasn't updating there. Uh, it was. So you can see it's updating here. And then we're going to slide down here. And then as you can see, we no longer have that problem anymore. All right, well, so that's pretty much it. Again, thank you for watching. Uh, I appreciate everyone who has uh, stuck with me through this series. And um, I'm excited about this channel going forward. I have a lot of really good ideas. Probably a lot of stuff that's going to feel a little bit similar, but be a little bit different. And nothing that's too kind of over, over the top. I don't want to be like, oh, let's do another clone. And then just, you know, get partway through it and uh, get bored about it again. Uh, yeah, keep an eye out. And this is going to be fun, I think. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you like what I do and you want to let me know, uh, you know, leave a comment down below or maybe you have something else to say that's just as important, feel free. Um, if you want to see more of this, subscribe. And if you want to support me, you can go down to the link in the description where I have my coffee and you can donate to me there. Uh, but again, I realize that we're all in really tough times and if you don't have any money to donate, please think of yourself before you think of me. So yeah, that's it for now and I'll see you next time. Super trooper, super trooper, super trooper, and he sells soup.